Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Custom to Tampa. This time we have something a little bit different, but I hope you like what we've done. Today's got something a little bit different for Custom to Tampa channel and today we're going to be looking at using full stand to add the DPF percentage display onto the menu. This came about after doing a oil service on the van the other day and then realizing actually there's no real way to see when the service was done etc or as far as I could see there wasn't. So I decided to look around at various options and came across the DPF percentage option and I'm going to go through that with you now and I'll explain the tools that you need as we go through that. All of the items that I've used for this are going to be in the link below link into Amazon for the full stand cable and then to the website for full stand to download it. Once you've downloaded full stand and installed it you can then use the extended license which you can get for two months free of charge and again all of that is linked below. Get full stand up and running and then connect your full stand cable to the OBD port on the Ford Custom into your laptop and then you can then follow through the options that I am going to show you now. Apologies that my screencast recording has cut off a little bit of the bottom of the screen, but hopefully you can see me now uh, hovering over the connect to the vehicle option, clicking on that, and then it asks for a couple of things to be done. Putting the ignition key into the on position and then making sure that the HS toggle switch is selected on the OBD. Once you click OK, it then runs through the process of checking the car. For the first time, it won't come up with your profile because it's the first time it's done it, but once you've done it once, it then remembers the profile of the car and then checks it. You'll then have to switch it from HS to MS CAN with the toggle switch, um, and then you just follow the instructions as per what's on the screen now. Once you've done that, we then go over to the configuration and programming option. We click on that. And then we're going to be looking for the IPC module configuration as built format option. We select that and then we click play down at the bottom. It then says there may be some configuration changes that are not safe. This is important that you actually back up all of your profiles here in case you make any changes that then do something to you later to your vehicle. And I'm not going to hold no responsibility for anything that you decide to do. This is purely what I've done to get this to work. Once you've done this, it reads all the data and then it comes up with all of these digits. Now the area that we need to be looking at is the 720 line and then we look at the second digit in the first column as highlighted. Now mine is set as 8 at the moment because that's what I need to have to enable the DPF percentage on my vehicle. Now if you've got a uh, slightly different vehicle to me and you've got a different number in there then you need to pay attention to which number there is and which number you need to change it to. Mine was initially zero and from the literature that I found I knew I had to convert the zero to the eight. I changed that zero to the eight and then I clicked on write. Now it is important that you've made sure that you've clicked save all so that you've got a copy of the profile before you make any changes. As I said earlier, I'm not going to be responsible for anything that you do that then changes it. So I'm going to demonstrate this because if I click on right now, I can't make any changes because I've not made any edits. So I'm going to change my value of eight back to zero, which will then turn off the DPF percentage option in the menu. So simply change that to eight and then click on right. I then have to click yes to confirm that I want to do that and then it's going to ask me to turn the ignition into the off position and then back on. Once I've done this, this has cleared the DPF percentage option from my menu. To add it back on, I do the reverse and I change that second digit in the 7200702 line from zero to eight. I will put up on a screen now the numbers that you need to change if yours are different from the zero. 
Hopefully the following screen explains in the notes section what you need to do. So if the, my example is given there, where my given value of 0 needed to go to 8. If yours is 1, then you change it to 9, 2 to A, 3 to B, 4 to C, 5 to D, 6 to E, and then 7 to F. Once we've done with that, we can go to the Configuration and Programming tab at the top and flick back in. Now I went via the PCM module configuration page here because I can use the drop down to change my activate uh, manual regeneration but you can also go in via the AS or the as built function. If you go in via the as built function you don't need to switch the CAN bus over but I went in via the the menu and as you can see I've got the option here for manual regeneration to have it enabled. By default, it was set to number one, disabled, but then I turned mine to number two. And you can see how those correspond with the previous image that I showed, which I'm going to put up on the screen now, which gives you the note section if you decide to go via the as built function. It's a simply a case of selecting whichever option that you want, then clicking on right, and then clicking on the tick to then write that to the uh, PCM toggle the ignition on or off and then you will get the option to do the manual regeneration. I managed to do that today but I'm not quite sure at what level it offers you the manual regeneration. I had 80% full earlier today and then I did the manual regeneration and then I haven't then got the option up again after that so I'm not sure if there's a certain level that that triggers but I certainly got it to work but I can't tell you when it will come back again. But hopefully that has been of help to some of you out there. I'll now put that screenshot back up again of the values just in case you need them one last time. And here we go as promised is the screenshot with the, the values that you might need. Now I think these work on modern cars. This mine was a 2016 Euro 6 for custom but I do believe it works on later models as well, but I cannot guarantee any of that. I hope this has been helpful for all of you out there. If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave a message in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching Custom to Camper.